Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Glory, hallelujah, Father. Hide me behind the cross. There'll be none of me but all of you, sweet of these lips of clay. Let me leave here singing, I got just what I wanted and more from the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah. Thank God for everybody who can tune in today to our full revival telecast. I've got a word straight from the throne of God for you today, and I'm going to entitle the message, A Calf and a Half. A Calf and a Half. You don't want to miss this message. So if you're just tuning in, please share it. Please like and subscribe on YouTube and hit the bell notifications for more sermons like this. I'm promising you this will be a message you don't want to miss. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. With that being said, let's go to Luke, the 15th chapter, verse 23. And he said, bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let's eat and be merry. 24. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is now found. And they began to be merry. They began to celebrate. This was heaven and the Father in heaven celebrating that a child that was lost had been found. And it even said that when the son was still afar off, the father saw him and ran to him, meaning he was anticipating his son's return. He was anticipating his son to come back to the father. He knew, I've raised my boy right, and I know if he makes mistakes, He'll still come home to me. He had faith in his son that was lost. He had faith that he would come back home. Are you hearing me? You might not believe in God today, but honey, God believes in you. God has faith that you're going to return home. God is watching for you. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Look on the portals, he is waiting and watching, calling, lost sinner, come home, come home. Come home, he who is weary, come home. Thank you, Jesus. He's calling. He's waiting and watching by the portals of glory, waiting for you and waiting on me. He's waiting for everybody who's tired of wandering in their life and saying, Lord, where are you? He's saying, I'm right here. You might be finding yourself in that spot. But that's right, Brother Ron. God bless you. Angel, God bless you. He said that he will be faithful to complete what he started in your life. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. See, he said, let's take the fatted calf and kill it. And it's amazing that he would say that. That the father would bring up through the son's parable the fatted calf. The one that was not pleased with the return was the brother who was out there and he was living right and he says, how could you do this? How could you not throw a feast for me because I keep your commandments. I keep whatever you tell me to do. How can you not throw a feast for me? But my brother is getting the blessing. And I've lived for you. I've done what you've said. Why is he getting blessed? And the father said, Son, all that I have is yours. 
And he said, all you had to do is take it. All you had to do is get what I've got for you to get. But he said, your brother which was lost has come home. Your brother that went away has come home. You need to celebrate that he's home. You need to celebrate that he's back. And he put a robe on his back and, and shoes on his feet and a signet ring upon his hand. The ring represented whose house he came out of. The Bible said, do not grieve the Holy Spirit who is sealed in you until eternity, until the day of redemption of Christ. Wait a minute. What does the word sealed mean? It's where we get the word signet ring from. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. When you're looking at a ring like this, you know it's a Cherokee. But when you are looking at a ring that is war with authority of a very rich person, that it has their family crest upon it, and they will seal it in wax. Before they ever send out a letter, they'll seal it with wax. And the family crest will be upon that ring. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. In God's Word, blood is the acceptable sacrifice for sin. Blood is the acceptable sacrifice for for sin. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews 9.22 He said in Hebrews 9.22 that without the shedding of blood there can be no forgiveness for sin. He said there's no loopholes there. He said without blood being shed I cannot forgive the sin. That is why it was so important not just to know that the Son had been restored, but the sin of the Son had been forgiven. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only had the Son been restored, but His sins had been forgiven. But I'm getting to the title here in just a few moments, if you'll bear with me, about the calf and a half, okay? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray people will share this message today. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Amen. The only... acceptable sacrifice for sin was that blood had to be shed. Now check this out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. When the sacrifice was given for the sin, it had to be completely devoured. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Jesus. Leviticus 7, 17. Leviticus 19, 6 through 26, the sacrifice, the calf, had to be totally consumed. There could be nothing left. Even the fat of the calf had to be burned up for the sacrifice to be accepted. There was no exceptions. It had to be fully given. To be fully received. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. What did Jesus cry from the cross? Totelestai. It is finished. There was nothing left to give. Jesus is the Lamb of God. And He is the the red heifer sacrifice. At the same time, the, the red heifer was a symbol of God coming to sacrifice His life for His children. He is the ultimate sacrifice for sin. He's the lamb. He's the red heifer. He is everything 
we need. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Woo, glory. If you ain't getting to shouting something wrong with your shouter, and you may be a doubter, I'm telling you what, just don't be a powder. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. John 19, 28 through 30. Totelestai. It is finished. There was nothing left for Jesus to give. He was the completed, full sacrifice for the sins of mankind. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. He gave us all that we may have all in Him. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He gave all. Which brings me to the point of Abraham with Isaac. Abraham, the promise, and Isaac, the joy. Notice this. Abraham represented the promise. Isaac represented the joy of the promise. But Jacob represented the struggle for the promise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But now see, in Genesis 22 and 8, the original translation, when his son looks over and asks him, Father, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? The father looks at the son and says, uh, in the original translation, in the Hebrewic translation, Hebrewic, Hebrewic, whatever you want to call it, he says to him in the Hebrewic translations, Son, God himself will be the lamb for the burnt offering. He will be the lamb for the sacrifice. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But now I'm going to show you something. He prophesied a lamb. But in verse 13, he got a ram instead of a lamb. Now if you go back and look at the whole book of Genesis 28, uh, Genesis 22, sorry, Genesis 22, it is a perfect picture of the crucifixion the death burial and resurrection it, 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 it's a whole demonstration of what would happen in the future because the angel that spoke with Abraham said do not do this thing that you're about to do for I know that you fear me now for I know that you fear God for you have not withheld your only son from me it was the angel that said that, but he spoke as God because the voice of the Lord came to Abraham and said, Sacrifice Isaac to me. But notice he said, Your only son. Abraham had another son out of the will of God. And he had it through a woman who was an Egyptian. Isn't it interesting that later on Egypt would be tied into the life of the promised children? See, everything we do, every step we take has a counter step. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. You don't just put one foot down and not expect to go somewhere else when you put the other foot down. Amen? You, 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 don't, you don't expect to stay where you are. You're going forward of course, if you're going without the will of God, it's somewhere you don't want to go. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But he told Father Abraham, he said, Abraham, don't kill your son, for I know that you fear God, for you've not withheld thy only son from me. What is he talking about? The promised son. The thing you waited on. The one you waited on to get here from the Lord. You was willing to lay it down because the scripture said he was willing to lay down Isaac 
Because he truly believed that God would raise him up. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But now this is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me about. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Mount Moriah. This is where Abraham and Isaac were at. But Abraham took him to the mountain. Expecting to sacrifice his son. Sister Renee, God bless you. I love you. I'm praying for you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. But what he thought would be the ultimate sacrifice turned out to be the ultimate sanctification. Because Abraham believed and the Bible said he had faith and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. So what he thought would be the ultimate sacrifice became the ultimate process in his sanctification. And God was saying, I'm not going to hold your Ishmael to your Isaac. I'm not going to hold Ishmael against you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. It showed His grace to stand between our destruction and our deliverance. He, he stood there and said, I'm not going to hold your sin against you. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. This, this angel that ministered to Abraham, the word angel, a lot of people get tied up with the word angel. That word angel is messenger, angelos, meaning one sent to speak a word from God. This was the pre-incarnated Christ because He spoke as God. Not just for God. It was God's voice coming from this messenger. Messenger, are you hearing me? This was no angel. This was the pre-incarnated one, the Lord Jesus Christ, speaking to Father Abraham on the mountain. I'm going to go a little bit deeper real quick. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. He prophesies a lamb. But he gets a ram, verse 13, with its horns caught in the thicket. The thickets were thorns. Sounds like God's lamb. There was a crown of thorns placed upon his head. Amen. Everything in that story is symbolic of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It took three days to get up the mountain. It took three days to get back down. After three days, Christ ascended from death and brought us into eternal life. Let me tell you something, honey. On the day that Christ resurrected, the tomb became a womb. For out of it was birthed Christianity. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Is somebody getting blessed this day? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, Lord. Amen. Mm, glory to God. John 1, 29. John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus, says, Behold the Lamb of God. He don't just say it once. He says it twice. There is four meanings for the word behold in John's Gospel. And he uses two different meanings. When he says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The first one means catch the vision. That's exactly what it means. Catch the vision. What vision? Abraham's vision. This is Abraham's vision of the Lamb. God's Lamb. Coming in the flesh to give His life for you and me. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Then... He leaves and goes out into the wilderness after being baptized and the Spirit coming down and the voice of the Father speaking. 
Now, the Father spoke and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus had not yet cast out one devil. He had not healed one sick person. He had not delivered one oppressed person. But Jesus was not being identified for his accomplishments. He was being identified for his essence. Because until you know who you are and whose you are, you really do not know what you can do. Even though Jesus knew who he was, the Father still spoke into him. You are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible said that he grew in wisdom and favor with God by the things he suffered. Now the word suffered is translated allowed. What God allowed himself to be taught. How does God teach God? God allowed. Jesus, God in flesh, allowed the Father to take him through training that the fullness of of salvation could become the body of Christ. So, so we all could participate in His glory. We could all be a part of His life in Him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God loved us so much, He became one of us. He loved us so much, He refused to live without us. He said, I'm not living without my children. I've got to go and die for them to redeem them. And I don't want to live without them. I'm going to come after them. That they might be saved. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The second image, the second word, for behold, was allow him to imprint himself He's saying this is the vision of Abraham. Now allow him to become the living vision in your life. Allow him to imprint himself upon your, in, your innermost being. Allow him to imprint himself upon you. That's for the second time it meant. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Abraham saw the future land. Jesus is both the Lamb and the Ram. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. See, God's own... God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Psalms 50 and 10. And he, uh, honey, he don't eat hamburger meat. It's all for you. So why does he own the cattle on a thousand hills? The Bible said he is rich in mercy. He owns it all. But honey, he knew that we was going to fall. He knew that we were going to have times in our life where we would need his blood. So not only does it show his richness in the earth, it shows the bountiness of his grace. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm getting somewhere with this. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That was Psalms 50 and 10. Isn't it interesting that God killed an animal to save us instead of killing us? When Adam fell, Genesis 3.21, God killed an animal and he put the coats upon Adam and Eve. Why? Because he knew that the sin they was in couldn't be covered with the fig leaves of their 
fake. They, they, they tried to fake it till they made it. They tried to just sew something together and, and put something together. But don't you know the moment it was... Don't you know the moment that the leaves were disconnected from the tree of life? Lord have mercy. Don't you know that the moment that those leaves were disconnected from the limb, that at that moment, hallelujah, Jesus, at that moment, the very second those limbs, those, those uh, things were snapped off, the uh, fig leaves were snapped off, the tree began to die. It began to die. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And he knew that eventually and very soon that the fig leaves were going to fall off. God knew that the pleasure and sin was going to last just for that season and their fig leaves were going to fall off and God said, I've got to give them a better covering. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. In Genesis 3.21, an animal had to die. Blood had to be shed for their sins to be forgiven. We, we look at the grace, but at the same time of looking at the grace, we need to realize something else. Yes, God. even though God banished them from the garden, He gave them a covering for the sin that they were in. He, he took the skin of an animal. He shed the blood of an animal. The first act of redemption was done in the garden. Let me tell you something. Sin originated in heaven, but then it originated on earth in a garden that came from heaven. It originated in heaven when Lucifer fell. Then we get to the garden. The garden is there. We don't know how long they were in the garden, but there's a fall in the garden from the grace of God. They're from the grace of God, but they are banished now from the garden. Here comes the final Adam in another garden. The garden of Gethsemane, the place of crushing of the oil. The anointed one is in the place of crushing at the oil. And right there, he says something that the first Adam should have known better and have said. The first Adam was about his own will. The final Adam was about the will of the Father. The first Adam dug up thorns. The final Adam wore the thorns. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. At that moment, he said, Father, not my will, but yours be done. He had a human will. He gave himself a human will. And he said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. And upon saying that, humanity stepped down and divinity stood up. Because he was fully God and fully man. The final Adam said, Father, not my will. Oh no, not my will, Father, but yours be done. And when he said that, the final Adam made the flesh sit down. And the Spirit of God within the final Adam stood up and said, We're going to go to the cross. And then there's a resurrection going to happen. A birthing is getting ready to take place. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing me today? Are you breathing? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I feel the Holy Ghost all over this message. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't it interesting that God took a calf and he split it in half. Exodus 10, 26, when he started making a covenant and a friendship with Abraham. Exodus 10, 26. Might be Genesis 10, 26. <laughs> Hold on, wait a minute. I think it is Genesis 10, 26. It is Genesis 10, 26. I'm sorry, y'all. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. He split a calf in half. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Here we go. I love Moses because he was not willing. Hey, Pastor Stephen Gentry, God bless you. I love you, brother. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Let me show you this. Praise the Lord. He was not willing. <laughs> he was not willing. Moses was not willing. Exodus 10, 26. He was not willing to sacrifice the sacrifice. See, Egypt, Pharaoh said, we'll set you free, but your cattle leave here. He said, I'll do this if you'll do that. I'll do this if you'll do that. Your cattle leave here with me. And Moses said, not one hoof shall be left behind. He said, I'm not even leaving the sacrifice behind. Glory to God. He was not willing to sacrifice the sacrifice. He said, I know something still got to be done. And he said, I'm not willing to leave one hoof behind. He said, hallelujah, Jesus. He said, not one hoof shall be left behind. Exodus 10 and 26. In the time of Abraham, God literally split a calf in half. Two calves, and the Bible said he walked between them. It was a covenant of the coming covenant. It was a sign of a greater covenant that God was making with Abraham. And he made it again in Jeremiah 34 and 19. He took two calves and he split them in half. And he walked between them. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He walked between them. Do you know what? Like I said, it was a sign of a greater covenant. It was a greater establishment of a greater covenant in the future. Hebrews 9 and 12. Let's go there right quick. Thank you, Jesus. If somebody got blessed by this message today, I hope. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I have a lot of fun preaching. You never know what you're going to get when I'm preaching like, on live videos and that's what I love about it <laughs> thank you Jesus amen praise the Lord Hebrews 9 and 12 thank you Lord Jesus amen neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place once it's settled no more need for physical sacrifice into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us the calf and a half was a blood covenant that God made with Abraham he made a covenant and he said I'm promising you. He said, stick with me. And he said, I'm going to meet every need. And he said, I'm going to make a nation out of you. And he said, I, I'm going to do this and that for you. But he began to show his glory and he began to explain his plan to Abraham, what he wanted to do in his life and how he wanted to use Abraham for his glory. And then at the final frontier, at the final at the final stake in the tent, God speaks to Abraham and he says, I'm, I'm making this covenant for you and for your future generations. And basically, it was as a sign of a wedding, God was marrying himself to Israel. He was marrying himself to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. 
He was saying, now we are one. We are in covenant together. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's just go ahead and read that real quick. I thought I was done. I just heard the Lord say to go ahead and read that. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But He entered heaven through His own blood and made a way of holiness and a way of escape for me and you. Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you glad for the blood of Jesus? Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 15. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 15, verses 10 through 12. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against the other. But the... Wait a minute. Abraham's vision. Yep, there it is. Let's go to verse 7. This is the covenant renewed. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of... Uh, You, you're of the Chaldeans to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer, the calf. He said, Take me a heifer. I want a blood covenant, God said. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, take me a red heifer of three years of age. And Jesus was 33 when he died. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And he said unto him, take me a heifer of three years old and a she-goat of three years old, a ram of three years old. There's a ram in the bush. And a turtle dove. There's a sign of the Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all of these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against the other, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. Isn't it interesting? The enemy is going to try to put his nose in your covenant with God. God's made a covenant promise to you and the enemy's trying to come in and trying to destroy the calf and the half. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The enemy's trying to come in and cut in on the plan that God has for your life. But watch what happens. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And when the sun was gone down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. Now he's in a, a vision now. Even though he's asleep, he's dreaming of a great darkness that was scary. And he said, a low, a great horror of darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abraham, no other and he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Now he's talking about the time of bondage. He's talking about them going into slavery. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And he said unto Abraham, Your seed will be a stranger in the land and that is not theirs, and they will serve them, and they shall be afflicted four hundred years. And also the nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and I afterward shall they and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Tested, tried. And purified. Are you hearing me? 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. He's going to test them, try them, and purify them. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible said that they left with all, read that word again, all the wealth of Egypt. They bankrupt Egypt. It was the richest nation in all the world at that time. God made Egypt pay back 400 years severance pay. <laughs> and they were bankrupt when God got done with them. Thank you, Jesus. The wealth of the wicked was laid up for the righteous. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, I love you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down in the dark, behold a smoke of a furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying unto him that seed, Thy seed have I given unto thee this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Canaanites and the Kissites and the Catamanites and the Hittites and the Prezusites and the Rephians and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Jebusites and the Jebusites. He said, I'm going to do it. He said, I'm making a covenant with you and with your generations. But he split a calf in half. And the lampstand, who's the lampstand? That's the Lord. He walked in between them. And, and, and he had it set up that he says, I'm, I'm going to marry myself to you. This is my blood covenant with you that I'm going to have a greater covenant with you. And it's going to be that when you come through what you're going through, you're going to find the the rest and the peace and the and the prosperity that you were needing. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. So, I'm here to say this. Jesus came that you might have life and have it more abundantly in all areas of your life. Amen. Not just one. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. He came with the calf and a half. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Well, I'm done with that message, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If y'all got blessed by this, please share it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to know the Bible says that He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And I tell you, He is the calf and a half. He, he is the one that gave the greater covenant, the greater peace. He's the one that took away the animal sacrifices. Now it ain't needed because He fulfilled it all through His shed blood at Galgotha's Hill. If you're watching me and you're saying, Brother HR, I'm, I'm in a situation where I'm going back on my word to God and I'm, I'm living in a sinful state and I know if God don't deliver me, I'm not going to heaven. If that's you, and you're watching me pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe you died on the cross that God the Father raised you from the dead. And I am saved in Jesus' name. Lord, wash me, cleanse me, fill me with your spirit that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' mighty, precious, and holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Now. If you're sick in your body, I curse every devil of sickness. I command a creative miracle from the body part rooms in heaven right now in Jesus' name. 
I take authority over every symptom and sickness in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Have your bound up. I command every issue in the tissue be healed in the name of Jesus. Now I rebuke every spirit of bondage in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every addiction receive an eviction by holy conviction in Jesus' mighty name. He who the Son sets free is free indeed according to Nahum 1 and 9. The attack cannot return a second time in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible said we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Do it now, Lord Jesus, by your glory and power. Deliver your people in Jesus' name. Let there be a spiritual exodus for their life in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Pastor Mike, God bless you. I love you. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, if you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire, and out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Do it now, Lord Jesus. Washing of the water of the word. I do that prophetically in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you got touched today, if you got saved, healed, set free, delivered, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, write to me. Let me know what God's done for you. Hour for revival at yahoo.com. I want to celebrate with you. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you in the next meeting in the air in heaven. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. It's always a blessing and a privilege to talk to the body of Christ. I love you. God bless you. If you desire to get my book, you can do so by going on Amazon. 1050 a copy. It's called McFerrin, and it will change your life. Henry Robert Kidd, K-I-D-D, -D, on Amazon.com. You can get it through Lulu Publishing anywhere books are sold. Let me tell you, that book has led so many people to Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals. If you'd like to give, you can do so by going to Cash App and typing in hashtag Hour for Revival, or you can do it through PayPal by going and clicking Give on Facebook Messenger. Your love gifts, large or small, keep helping us bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world not just here but abroad as well i love you god bless you brother daniel god bless you i love you amen praise the lord i'll see you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven please like share subscribe and click the bell notification for more upcoming videos on youtube i love you god bless bye bye